curves in industrial design, the polar form of a Bezier curve. We recall the de castel joe algorithm for a cubic Bezier curve. We start with four control points, C sub 0, C sub 1, C sub 2, C sub 3, and the three segments which join successive control points. We subdivide each of these segments into subintervals of lengths proportional to t and 1 minus t, and we indicate the point affecting the subdivision. These three points are indicated in red. They're the points of the second generation of the del castel joe algorithm. We connect them by the segments between successive points of this generation, and we subdivide them again in the same proportion t. We obtain two points in this step, which we connect by a, a segment, which we finally subdivide again in the proportion t again. The final point obtained is denoted in green and is called c. It is a point of the cubic Bezier curve, and all the points of the cubic Bezier curve are obtained in this way for different choices of the value t. The idea of the polar form is that instead of repeating the same value t three times in a row, we'll take different proportions at each step. The polar form of a Bezier curve is obtained by changing the proportion t at each stage of the de castel joe algorithm. We consider three proportions, t sub 1, t sub 2, t sub 3. In the first step, we subdivide the segments in proportion t sub 1, and the second set, step in the proportion t sub 2, and in the third step in the proportion t sub 3. Again, we obtain a point denoted c and indicated in green. We can indicate it as c is a function of t sub 1, t sub 2, t sub 3. In the case in which t sub 1, t sub 2, and t sub 3 are all equal corresponds to the usual de castel joe algorithm and would be a point on the curve. In general, for different values of t sub 1, t sub 2, and t sub 3 that are not equal, c need not lie on the curve. Here we see the polar form of the cubic Bezier curve. As we move t sub 1, what changes are the points selected in the first step of the de castel joe algorithm. As we move t sub 2, what changes are the orange points, those obtained in the second step. As we move t sub 3, what changes is the selection of the point on the last segment. When these values are different, they won't in general lie on the cubic Bezier curve. For instance, as we take t sub 3 to be very small, we see that the green point is actually quite far from the curve. If we take all of the proportions to be 0, this means we're always selecting the first point on each segment. The point that results in the end is simply the first control vertex. So in the first step, we take the end point of the first segment, and then in the second and third steps, we take the first point of the resulting segments. What we obtain is the first control point, and so forth. If we set t sub 2 to be 1, t sub 1 to be 1, and t sub 3 to be 0, we obtain the second the control point, c sub 2. And if all of the proportions are equal to 1, we obtain the final control point. The polar form of a Bezier curve gives, on the one hand, a way to describe the points on the Bezier curve. For a cubic curve, every point on the curve has the form C of T, T, T for some T. It also gives a way to describe the control vertices. The vertices of the control polygon of a cubic per curve are obtained by setting the proportions equal to all equal to 0 or to 1. If we have three proportions and we set each of them to 0 or 1, there are eight possible ways to do that. And there are only four control points. This is explained by the fact that the choices 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or, or 0, 0, 1 all yield the first control point. And the choices 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 1 all yield the second control point. This is a consequence of the fact that the analytic expression for the cubic Bezier curve in terms of t sub 1, t sub 2, and t sub 3 is symmetric in the arguments t sub 1, t sub 2, and t sub 3. That means if we permute these arguments, the value of the function does not change. Consequently, setting these arguments equal to, for example, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 1, 0 will give the same value. Here we see the same control polygon represented twice. 
What's different on the left and right are the choices of the parameter values for the proportions. On the left, we see that these parameter values as 0 0.9, 0 0.6, and 0.1. On the right, we see the same values, but in a different order. The resulting points C, C tilde, are indicated in green. And we can see that when we superimpose them both on the left image, they coincide. If we were to change S sub 3, we see that the point corresponding to the proportions S moves away from C. However, if we put all three values equal but in different order, the points coincide. We can change this S2 to 0 0.9 and S3 to 0.1. And again, the points coincide. So we, we see that while the intermediate stages of the algorithm to compute the points depend very much on the proportions, the final point obtained does not depend on the order in which we choose the proportions.